So back in 1986, Dr. Pamela Klonoff came here and helped start what is now one of the best programs in the country. It's called the Center for Transitional Neuro Rehabilitation, and it's something that uh, we know well with my stepson Dylan, and uh, something that obviously a lot of patients have been through. So the concept is very, it, it, it's based around something called a milieu. What is that? So milieu is a French word for community. And the way the program operates is people are part of a therapeutic community where they're involved in teamwork and social interaction and taking responsibility and simulating all the things that they're going to do when they leave treatment to go back into the home, the community, the work and school environments. You've, you've seen it all. You've seen everything from the brain injury on a motorcycle um, to the hemorrhage, to the arteriovenous malformation or AVM, which is what we went through. Is there a, a common thing that all brain injury survivors share? You know, I think there's a number of things. Um, the way the program is based is on the philosophy of first improving patients' level of awareness, so they really understand more about how the injury has affected them. That's in terms of what their strengths are, what they have their retained skills at, as well as what their challenges are. So that's a universal, helping patients in that regard. The second is the acceptance of helping them cope and adapt to the changes that they have. And the third is to develop realistic goals, planning for the future, what level of work, what level of school, part-time, full-time, how do I get back involved in the community in a meaningful way? Those I see as being universals after these moderate to severe brain injuries, no matter what the cause is. How do you help somebody, because we've seen also acceptance at different rates, and everybody deals with it differently, loved ones deal with it differently, sometimes the patient is better at dealing with it than the loved ones. How do you address the whole idea of acceptance, and, and what are some things that maybe people watching um, can do to help themselves? Well, I'm a big believer in psychotherapy, um, being a psychotherapist myself, and that involves providing an outlet, a place for a patient to feel a safe haven to share. This is what's going on with my innermost fears, my worries, my trepidations, and just exploring all that and working together. So that's in a one-on-one -on -one setting. In our setting, we're fortunate that we also have a group psychotherapy. So patients sit together and they share back and forth what they're experiencing on an interpersonal and personal level, and they get that input from other patients who are going through a similar journey. The third is you've got to work with the, pa the patient's families. So they come in and they participate in the meetings with the psychotherapist, and then they have their own family group where they can share experiences and worries and plans for the future and triumphs. So that building up of a sense of connection and connectivity and relatedness is so much a part of helping patients cope and adapt. You know, there's, there's an interesting learning curve when you realize there might be some things that you will never be able to do again. Um, some things that you can probably do, but you're clearly doing them a little bit differently. Is that a frustrating long process? Is patience the key for anybody? Absolutely, absolutely. So here we talk about TTT, things take time. Um, there is a big emphasis on finding meaning and hope. So yes, people may need to adapt to a new direction. We call it the new normal. But the idea is to have plans, to have involvement, to have meaning, to have structure and activity, and to feel good about getting up every morning and having something worthwhile to look forward to, even if that is different than what the person was doing prior to the accident. You know, Ray made an interesting point. You know, here we are, our instinct is to, especially if we have a loved one who's been through a brain injury, our instinct is to applaud them for the smallest things. And But Ray made an interesting point. You know, for somebody who's used to hella skiing and, and running a, a company, you know, being applauded for tying your shoe is, is, is a little bit humiliating. It, as, as loved ones, how do we deal with that? You want to applaud somebody, but you don't want to embarrass them or, or talk down to them. Right. Well, here's what I do. I talk to people about the reference point. So if the reference point in your life is, what was I doing the day before the injury? Then I'm looking at all the losses from what I used to do. But you know, as family members and even as therapists, our reference point is not the day before the accident, it's the day of. So we're looking at, okay, starting from a point where you were hospitalized and in a coma and unable to dress yourself, these are huge accomplishments. So what I do is I try to help people look at where they are relative to those reference points. Yes, it's a loss from where you may have been before, but we also have to take into account where you started from from the day of the accident. And I think that helps give people a perspective. Advice for people who might not be able to get into the program. There's a waiting list. I mean, it's tough sometimes to get into this program. What's your advice for them? My advice is work with the resources that you have in the community, Brain Injury Alliance and all the other wonderful resources that are available, and create what you can to get the help that you need. And be an advocate. Be an advocate for yourself, and as family members, advocate for your loved one. Find out what's available, work with your physicians, work with the community, work with the Barrow system, get the help of whatever that you can in whatever way that you can.